Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Michael Palmisano here, and welcome to another guitar lesson reaction analysis video. Never know what to call these things. It's the God's honest truth. So, a while back, did Marcus King and Billy Strings Summertime. Freaking amazing. Revisited Billy Strings a few days ago. Amazing. I've been itching to get back to Marcus King. I've had Hundreds, 500, 600, 900 requests for Marcus King. So I didn't know which one I was going to do today, but I knew I was going to do Marcus King today. So what did I do? Same thing I do every morning. I log on to my website. I see what's going on. And right on my dashboard, as you can see, members who subscribe to the website, you get to see your recent course, whatever, and then a recent video activity. Because as a member, if you subscribe to my site, you know, that's what literally what supports this channel. You get to do requests for these videos. And I try to do a couple a week because you guys are literally paying to make this possible. So the, what is the first one I see? Just Marcus and a D'Angelico from Charleston, 1981. I like, the, I like the name, sir. He says, hey, Michael, when you reacted to the cover of Summertime with Billy Strings and Marcus King, you specifically called out Marcus's jazz chords and abilities. This version of him playing Wildflowers and Wine is great. Very reserved, yet also jazzed out and awesome. There's a lot going on here. It'd be cool to hear you break this down. Luke, Luke, deal, sir, deal. Now, I'm gonna open this up in a new screen. We'll do it full screen here. Marcus King, Wildflowers and Wine, recorded live for World Cafe. Let's do it. Let's do it. Wildflowers and wine. Oh, scratch your record. Background of our life. We're still in dancing all this time. Wildflowers and wine. Nope. I walk through fields. Evergreen, the golden sun, like I never seen. I picked them one at a time, wildflowers and wine. He is so good. God. <laughs> okay. You know, you know, I've always, there are a couple notable exceptions. You know, for Derek Trucks of the world. Uh, but I've always thought that the best guitar players were also killer singers. I mean, killer killer singers and usually the guitar playing reflects the vocal nuances now he hasn't taken a lead yet but i know who marcus king is i know what's coming right um listen to the vocal all the little vocal runs and it's it's so perfect because it's just him that d'angelico which sounds great and some reverb right and so you really get to hear Nobody else's influence on how long things should linger, what the dynamic range should be. This is this is uncut funk, if you would, right? So before we go on, let me show you the chord changes here. And if it looks like this is magic, it's the furthest thing from magic. Okay, this, so he's doing some interesting stuff, and I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna I'm gonna dig into it a little more. But basically. Is blues in the neighborhood of G. You got one. Then my favorite move in all music, dominant three. So B 
seven, then up to the four, and then and then he does something here which I didn't expect. What I did expect is to go from C seven, the four, right to that um, you know C sharp diminished thing. But instead, he does another super cool thing and goes to the flat six, which kind of has the same effect of going from C major to C minor. So that that you know that move that's like my second favorite favorite move in all music is four major to four minor. So many great songs do that, you know, a la, you know, Beatles and etc, etc. But doing it with the root, so going to E flat 7 like that, killer. So killer. And then, when it comes back around, it goes 1, 2, 6 minor, not flat 6, regular 6, so E minor. And then it's functioning, if you will, to a 2, A minor 7. To a five, D seven. There's your five finally. To a one. Then it walks over to the four. To the one. And usually you hit a five there. It sounded like you just stuck with the one. Enough of the theory. I'll get some of the voicings when it goes on. But let's let let's let's roll through this one. And, and see, that's, and now he's switching. Uh, this isn't the verse, it's similar. But now he's switching. He's going one to a four. G7, right? To C7. And instead of implying that C minor by going up to E flat, he's actually doing it now. C7. C minor 7. So the ear is expecting it, but it's but he's doing it a different way. It's those little nuances that make that, that that it's the subtleties. It puts the B in subtle. I love I love that expression. I mean, it's just that's what freaking makes it. It's those little things like that. And I guarantee if you're playing it with a full band, you think the other guys aren't going to be snagging that? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I know you mean it. Well, I look, look in your eyes Wildflower And wild Oh, scratchy record Plays in the background of our lives Wildflowers and wine, old, scratchy records. I'm so, you guys know how I am about the details of songwriting. This guy is such the full, he's such the real deal, the total package. Uh, killer arrangement, touch, and playing on the, on the guitar. And yes, I know, for all you more advanced players, I know that when he's going to that C, you know, he's alternating between C and C7. When he goes to that that uh, that D, he's he's adding some other, um, you know, voicings. But but just the combination of the killer songwriting, you know, telling the story, you know, painting the picture, uh, the singing, that is just killer. It's almost like constant falsetto. It's unbelievable, but 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 rich, and then just the touch, the touch with just a a little bit of reverb on the guitar. Clean. That's how you know you got a real one. We're still in dancing all this time. Wildflowers and wine. Yeah, all those, all those. 
you know, it's 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 all those little flares. I could start and stop this a million times. There's so many little things, but that instead of going that suss it out to a C to the G7, but just going up. Getting that C first inversion. All those little. Yeah, so, so. Come on, come on, Marcus. It's, so he's on B7, and it's, it's, it's like he's just going over the arpeggio, that, 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 uh, you know? So you got this, but it's this, so you hear him go, this isn't note for note. If you guys are new to this channel, this isn't note for note. Broad strokes. We're getting the arpeggio with some little flare in there of B7. Hearing him finish on that major third to the root. Same thing, just you know. See, he's up there to the C, right? Like going back and forth between those two roots right there. His touch is is impeccable. Yeah. <laughs> so. Yeah, I mean, I mean. It's a chord scale approach to soloing over each one of these chords. It's almost like he's moving the same form of lick form of shape, form of phrasing to each spot on the neck. He's not really altering chord shapes, you know, G, B, C, E flat. It all kind of has that move to it. And for each one, you know, Again, not for note, but that's kind of what I'm seeing him do. See, now that's the stuff that screws me up every time. I don't have that in me. Let's go back. One. So this is over the E minor. So he's got the. the oh, sorry, 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 sorry. So what I'm getting is it's in the neighborhood, the neighborhood, ladies and gentlemen. So you got your root and your flat three of E minor of your sixth chord, right? And he's going up, all in this zone. So keeping that, keeping that third or sixth, however you want to look at it, inversion, and going up one, two, flat three. So you're like like you're in E minor for a second, and you got all those little. Jazz runs, which I, I don't have. <sighs> I mean, I, I I get it, I get it. Can't do it though, you know that. To the A minor seven. Yeah, all those. Getting those runs between G7 and C7, that one to four, where you're constantly going back and forth between minor and major third, but clearing it up on the major third and keeping that, keeping an eye and the ear for where your flat sevens come in. That's what separates different blues players from each other. 
harmonically speaking, not touch. You know, the touch is its own little thing. But everybody's got a way they they go from one to four like that in the blues. And like you, you get to see it on display. He's doing it this whole time. See, and it's cool stuff like that. F major over G, right? So what is this? You're just giving it a different flavor of G7. So instead of all over the place, for the first time today, you know, you have an F major triad for the most part. So you got, this is say for the first time today, an F major triad for the most part. Not that, keep going, Michael, keep going. You're talking too much. Anyway, G is your tonal center. So this is your flat seven. This is your uh, two. And this is your four. Right? So you get the flat sevenness of G7, but then you're suspended, which means suspending the third. You either do it with its two or the four, or you're doing it with both of them. In that, a pretty sound. Let me lift that up. So he unsuspends the four to the three. Oh, I, can't I bet you can't. Feel in the way that I do. I know you feel it. Feel it the same way too. Oh, I can't help it. You're all I need to die. I know you mean it. When I look, look at you. You hear that walk down? It the, there's like two little notes in there on that walk down the vocal line. The vocal line is either hanging on the nine or the seven in there, but like you hear it, the sound of the five chord. You hear that little dup 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 and just pushes through it. Unbelievable singer, unbelievable. Watch, listen. And I look, look at you. Did you hear it? Do it one more time. One more time. Yeah, you are. Cheap red wine. Cheap red wine. Just that old scratchy record plays in the background of our life. That's a killer change. I knew I was missing that before. It's like, um, it's like, uh, D6-9? You got D, you certainly, you certainly got yourself an F-sharp, the major third of D. This is over the five chord, by the way, D7. But then he's got the A in there, right? Or sorry, the B, which is the nine. Sixth, or maybe it's just maybe he's just playing the. Either way, this is cool. It's so cool. It's a chord tone of G. It's the third, which is the tonal center. So it keeps the listener's ear going back there. Wild flowers and wild. Seven, ladies and gentlemen. It give us that G minor feel just for a second, just the right. So I can B flat instead of B just for a moment. Just sometimes you B flat me, baby. B flat me. Wildflowers and wild. for a second, just, you know.
Unbelievable. Unbelievable. So good. Marcus, 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 you are an absolute beast. Luke, thanks for recommending that. Thanks for subscribing at my website and supporting this channel. And for all you that, if, you, if, if, if you'd like to learn how I kind of break this stuff down and learn my approach to learning the instrument, please hit the first link in the description. I'd love to be your online teacher. Come support me over at Guitargate and, you know, it supports all this stuff like this. Um, Marcus, you're the man. Unbelievably good. Unbelievably good playing, singing, songwriting, feel, sound. The difference between the tone and touch between your voice and, and the guitar. Um, yeah, we're going to be doing more Marcus King. When you come to Baltimore, I'll be seeing you, brother. You ever want to come on here and promote something and do a live stream, I'm your man. Let's do it. Love you guys. Thanks so much. See you soon.